Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 Weather Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. We are off to a kind of dreary start to the day, but the afternoon will be much improved. That's why 13 Weather Ball is lit up in red as warmer temperatures are ahead. The cloud cover that you see firmly in place behind the weather ball this morning will start to dissipate as we head into the afternoon. View the 13 Weather Ball sponsored by Countryside Greenhouse of Allendale. We're looking at temperatures as of about 8 o'clock that were still in the low 40s for most of West Michigan. These will stay in the 40s for the next several hours. Winds coming in from the northwest around 5 to 15. But as we get the sunshine out this afternoon, that's when the temperatures are really going to start to respond. The winds will stay about the same through most of the day around that 5 to 15 mile per hour range. Once the sun becomes a factor through the midday and into the afternoon, we're looking at a rise in temperatures that'll take us into the upper 50s for most of the region. We'll cool back down and toward the 40s overnight tonight, but we'll be back into the 50s and even some 60s as we head throughout the day on Thursday. In fact, we're going to call that high today 56. Tomorrow, 62 will drop down to 38 between the two as partly cloudy skies stay in place tonight. The rain chance is pretty much done this morning, but tomorrow can't rule out a few showers that may pop up throughout the day. The radar out there shows the showers that were around earlier in the day Wednesday. Again, now mostly gone, but was resistant residual precipitation spinning around that low pressure system out to the east. That low going to keep working its way off to the east, and that means our chances for rain the rest of the day again going to pretty much dwindle out here in West Michigan. The hour by hour forecast shows the cloud cover around this morning. It does break again as we head into the afternoon. Clearing pattern sets up for later today with the sunshine coming in for the second part of your Wednesday. We stay partly cloudy through the overnight hours tonight and into Thursday morning, but throughout the day Thursday Day. Skies will be partly to mostly cloudy, and those clouds may again produce a stray bit of rain here in West Michigan. It's not really going to be a big chance for tomorrow, but a few showers can't be ruled out as we head through the day on Thursday. I think the chance for a scattered shower picks up as we head into Friday. Scattered shower potential across the region with mostly cloudy skies. We're not looking at a washout on Friday, but we'll keep an eye out for the rain chances as we head into the start of the weekend. As we work our way deeper into the weekend, though, the the pattern looking dry for Saturday and Sunday, though that will change by early next week when some thunderstorms could return to West Michigan. Between now and then, though, warmer temperatures ahead. It starts this afternoon with 40s and 50s on the lakeshore. We'll be in the low 50s to mid 50s for our northern zones with temperatures that will be hanging around mid 50s from Grand Rapids down to Kalamazoo. 13 to your side, 10 day outlook. <laughs> Temperatures return to the 60s for tomorrow, and then we keep warming up from there. 68 by Friday, up into the 70s as we head towards Sunday. We stay in the 70s until thunderstorms come in late Monday and into Tuesday. That'll push temperatures back down near normal for Wednesday and Thursday of next week. But even then, we don't stay there long. 70s round out the 10-day forecast. The EV Michigan Road Trip, sponsored by LaFontaine Ford Grand Rapids. This week, 13 on your side, Samantha Jacks is putting EVs to the test and answering your questions as well. One of the most common myths around the electric vehicles is that they are actually worse for the environment. Sam spoke to several experts about this, and here's what she found. As electric vehicles become more popular, there are concerns that they are not as environmentally friendly as promised. We spoke to several experts who have spent the last 10 years studying the environmental impacts of EVs who say otherwise. The, the driving the average electric vehicle produces about half the emissions of driving the average gasoline vehicle. So then where does this misconception come from? From a life cycle perspective, electric vehicles have a much lower impact than a gasoline vehicle. Key term, life cycle. At the start of making an EV, they're actually worse for the environment due to the battery making process. Batteries is really the biggest difference between the two vehicles. So we look really closely at battery manufacturing. And it turns out that is more energy intensive, more pollution associated with making the batteries than making uh, the gasoline vehicle. So brand new off the lot, EVs actually do have more emissions and pollutions associated with them. But it doesn't take long for that statistic to change. But because when you're operating it, it's so much cleaner over time, you're going to uh, essentially the EV will be cleaner. Uh, a passenger vehicle EV roughly but within two years of driving that vehicle 
you will make up for the difference in emissions. And then after that, you are in the clear. This is because gas-powered vehicles are emitting pollutions every day you drive it and the level of pollution associated with the extraction of oil and refining of gasoline. And that's assuming the average grid, the average electricity grid. If you're if you have solar on your roof or you're powering it with renewable, uh, renewable energy, you're choosing that through your utility provider, um, you know, the, the more benefits you're going to get. To take this one step further, EV batteries can be repurposed and recycled. An, an electric vehicle uh, reaches the end of its life after, say, 10 to 15 years. Um, before recycling, actually, the battery can be repurposed and the battery can um, then be used for stationary storage. So this means that it could be used to support um, you know, solar arrays, it can, it can charge in the middle of the day and then release in the evening when there isn't as much um, electricity being generated. Um, and then, as you mentioned, recycling, you know, all of the batteries can be recycled no matter if they were repurposed or if they weren't. Thanks to Sam for that report. You can send us your questions by texting CAR to 616-559-1310 and follow along our EV road trip on air and on our website, 13onyourside.com. The Sunday marks 20 years since the weather ball first lit up the skies here above 13 on your side. So all this week we're exploring everything weather ball before leaving on that EV road trip. Meteorologist Samantha Jacks talked with the man who's taken care of the weather ball since uh, well, we put it up here at 13 on your side. Let's find out what goes into keeping the weather ball blinking bright. We all know the poem weather ball red. Here comes Ted. No <laughs> weather ball red <laughs> warmer ahead. Yeah. But when the weather ball is down, we call Ted to town. So when they brought it back in 2003, I worked at a company and uh, we did all the neon on the weather ball and I was the lead man there. And so I found myself inside the weather ball doing all the wiring and putting all the tubes up. Now, 20 years later, Ted is still that guy keeping our weather ball shining bright in the sky. To me, you know, it's work, uh, but yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I'd say so. The one and only man that keeps the nearly six ton weather ball high in the sky with 288 lights shining bright. And he'll never forget the day that he got it up and running. And it was all on the ground here. I had it all wired and then I put all these tubes on it. And then this huge G lot crane came and hooked onto it and put it up there and set it up there. And a guy was up there and he bolted it. And, and then when they turned it on, every piece of neon lit. So that was a, that was a good one. Yeah. Not every trip up is exactly the same. Usually changing the transformer, the power supply on everything. Uh, today it happened to be uh, four neon tubes that were smashed from probably a bird flying in it. But each comes with an adrenaline rush. Sometimes I dread it now that I'm getting older. I mean, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. For me, the hardest part is probably putting the ladder up, climbing up it. Because when you get it in it, everything is right here at your hand level. Once up there, he never forgets to take it all in. Usually when I get done fixing it, I'll go up to the top and I'll stand out there and look around and take a picture of Grand Rapids. And uh, always when I get down to the ground, I send that picture to my wife and so she knows I made it down. <laughs> After 20 years of climbing the 100 foot pole that lights up the city of Walker, it might be time for a new line in our weather ball poem. Weather ball red, warmer weather ahead. Weather ball green, no change for scene. Weather ball blue, cooler temperatures in view. And weather ball dark, Ted's got the spark. And you can learn more by watching the weather ball special. It's now on 13 plus available on Fire TV and Roku. And then Sunday, stop by the Mitten Bruin Company. That's where you can meet the 13 on your side weather team as they show off bits of weather ball history. And additionally, there'll be weather ball merchandise. They'll be on sale at the event. T-shirts, donuts and a weather ball red ale on tap. I'm looking forward to that myself. Now that you've been up to date on the latest news and weather headlines from around here in West Michigan, you can always find more at 13onyourside.com or by downloading 13 on Your Side news and weather apps. For now, thanks for watching 13 Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.